Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Last week, we talked about meeting the earth to be able to access the yin chi of the earth. And so part of what we, the discussion was, you know, the four components of meeting and why they're so important. So the, um, um, the basic idea of, of meeting, as, as I see it, and as I've written about it, is, is that there are four basic components and, and that you, when you meet, you engage another, someone or something in a way that where you are engaging them with your whole being. And it doesn't matter if they meet you back. The, there's a change that occurs within you whenever you do that. You are shifting from being an observer of the world, thinking about the world and running things through a, a, your personal narrative and shifting into the present moment where you're encountering what is in present time. When that happens, there, instead of being an observer of, of your world, you are in it. You're, you're, you've entered into it and there's a, you're engaging your life, your circumstances, your environment, others within it in a way that where you're resonating with rather than observing. And that is where the magic happens. That's where, where we start to access the stuff beyond the, what I call the eye of spirit. The eye of spirit is those perceptions that that way of perceiving that is not dependent exclusively on your rational thinking and your five senses. It goes beyond and it, It's a fairly broad category, but it's, you know, most of what we are, what we find attractive about Tai Chi Chuan and the internal arts is the stuff that happens beyond the mechanical approach to, the, to it. It's beyond Tai Chi as a mere exercise and goes into something where we're actually engaging body, mind, spirit integration. And we're able to tap into stuff that is beyond you know, what we would ordinarily be able to, to grab hold of. So the so within within meeting there is a context within which the the game is being played and there's we we're context building machines as humans we are constantly thinking about updating our personal narrative we're constantly churning out information even while we're asleep we're we're digesting uh, and and postulating alternate realities and things like that. There's always something going on in the default mode network part of the brain. And that's something where they can actually see that there's activity that's happening fairly constantly, whether or not you're asleep or awake or whatever. But there are other parts of the brain where we're able to cavort and frolic. We can actually you know, do other cool stuff. And that's what happens when we enter into the eye of spirit. We, we start to be able to engage the world in a way that is uh, new every moment because we're entering into now, into the, into the radical presence. So, but we start by building context. We, have, we know, want to know what game we're playing and pretty much at all times. We want to know, you know, what's happening now. That's, that's what the, the, the default mode network is churning out. It's saying, what's happening now? What's happening now? Okay, is there anything? Is there some, is there a danger there? Is there something I should be worried about? You know, oh, you know, if I if I do this, what will happen in the future? That kind of thing. It, it ponders these things. So we once we move into the meeting phase, though, we shift out of that, and we begin by getting coherent. That is, we move into a state of wholeness. Body, we get the the at, at a physical level, we start to create a state where everything is tied in together, all the, uh, everything is connected up. We, the energy of the system starts, it moves into a state of coherence, that is, it's a state of wholeness. 
And when that happens, we there's a, a, a perceptible change in our state of being. From there, we move into presence. That is, we occupy space and time. So once we get the, into that state of wholeness, there's we start to find ourselves in the moment. We, we locate ourselves and we assert our being, create, yeah, here I am. And then from there, once we've established where we are in time and space, then we can extend to something else. That's where the encounter incurs. That's where we, we are able to go from this state of wholeness in the present moment and be able to encounter someone or something. Easiest to, it's easiest to see this, you know, whenever you're with another person, whenever like you're, you're really vibing together and you're kind of resonating and, and there's, a, there's a real uh, uh, sense of, of, of understanding happening between you. Time just seems to pass and you're just like, whoa, that was, that was you know, wow, we were in some other place. But that's because we've moved outside of the objective. We've moved into a non-objective state. Then we create more context. We say, oh, what just happened? We start to build a story again. And so there's, we, we, and we circle around those. So meeting includes all those four steps. So it's both objective and non-objective and it allows us to engage the world and also learn from it. So last week we engaged the, uh, the earth to actually tap into resonate with the earth chi, the yin chi of the earth. The week before we were engaging uh, the, one of the points of the, of the, of the, of the Bagua, the, um, we went to the, we faced east and use that to nurture the liver function. Well, today we're going to go the opposite direction from last week. We're going to in, engage the yang chi of the heavens. And so we speak metaphorically about the heavens. It's not, I don't think it's harps and angels kind of heaven, uh, but it's more that which is beyond, that which is beyond our comprehension, beyond our understanding, the unknowable and the unknown. And this is from that unknowable and unknown that we are filled with this electricity that comes with the yang chi. And much easier, I find, to get into the yin chi of the earth because there's something solid about it and something very nurturing and comforting about about the yin chi of the earth is like oh okay and the point of you know for most of us we tend to be a little young anyway that is we tend to be do 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 we're around we're we're thinking we're doing all this young activity and to actually be able to get into that peaceful very stable state that is evoked by the by the earth yin chi is is quite uh, therapeutic and enjoyable but it's easy we, we want to be able to shift gears as well the we can appreciate the yin only to the extent that we can appreciate the yang and vice versa, we can only appreciate the yin as much as we are able to appreciate uh, the yang. So uh, we want to be able to go, be able to, to, to toggle between those two poles and be able to hold them apart, hold them in opposition so as to generate a chi flow, to be able to generate energy. And I've talked about this many, many times. We've done it in, in meditations. You know, I say, reach with the crown of your head, feel your feet, extend down through your feet. So we're holding those poles in opposition. So this is something that is familiar to most of us. I want to take it a little bit farther today 
just so we can explore what's a little bit beyond our comfort zone in terms of young. And so we'll, we'll, we'll do that, we'll explore that, and then we're gonna finish off by going back and, and getting back into the yin some more so we can actually you know, ground that energy and, uh, and really feel into that. So uh, uh, also uh, at the point of, we're now into summer in the Chinese calendar. So it, uh, I think May 6th was the, uh, was whenever we shifted into, into summer. So we've gone from the yin of winter to the yang of summer. So it seems appropriate to me anyway, that we explore the yang in this and be able to kind of take it and get a real feel for more and more. And there is really no end in, in how much more it can be. So you, you know, we, we go, uh, we, there, the expansion occurs and, but there is also, I think, a um, uh, kind of a, a safety mechanism in each of us that we, we uh, okay, that's enough. And we, we pull back into, into a more comfortable state, a more place where we feel a little safer. But it's, I think it's, it's worthwhile, at least in the context, the safety of, of a class like this, to be able to kind of take it and take it even, even bigger. So, uh, how about we stand up and we'll uh, we'll play around with this? So let's start with our three pillars. You want to feel the balls of your feet. Allow your weight to settle over that. Knees unlocked. And feel your body mass, your weight sinking down through your feet. And even though you're in the balls of your feet, you're still connected to all, the all over your foot. You want to feel the toes touching the floor, the heel, everything is touching. But we're organizing around that, the, the, the balls of the feet. Relax and sink down into the earth. And we're establishing our yin pole here. And this is really important, especially as we start to explore the yang more and more in this exercise, to really have a kite string there to keep us grounded. Now reach with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. And feel your breath. Feel each inhale and exhale. And with each exhale, find yourself uh, sinking a little deeper into your legs, into your feet, into the earth. Each inhale, feel the expansion. So we're already playing with the yin and yang of this. Relax your lower back, allow your sacrum to drop and level out your pelvis. You know, feel your lower lumbar area getting, you know, taking some of the curvature out of it. And as you're reaching at, at the same time, you're allowing your pelvis to drop, you're feeling a lengthening of the spine, opening the space between the vertebrae. And this allows the energy to move more freely.
Continue to feel your breath. Feel your fingertips. Point your index finger, feel your fingertips like your fingernails. We're, we're, when we do that, we're activating our wood chi. And wood is the element that feeds fire. It feeds the yang. Wood takes us from the yin of winter to the yang of fire. And so it's, it helps to nourish the fire, nourish the yang. Reach with your elbows, your arms are slightly rounded and open your shoulder joints. Push away from the earth and spiral down to the left, spiral down to the right, releasing the hip joints. Feel yourself very relaxed, very sung. Reach with your wrists very slowly. Feel yourself moving through the space that you occupy. Reach with your elbows, moving very slowly, feeling the heaviness of your arms, the density of your arms, the density of your fingers. Reach with the fingers and open, open between your shoulder blades and feel that expansion. Down with your elbows, bend the wrists and feel yourself slowly moving through the space. Feel the viscosity of the space, feel like, like you're you're moving through a swimming pool. Water is, you're feeling the resistance of the water. Feel the wrists, reach with the wrists, bend them, fingers are hanging, reach with the elbows, feel the viscosity of the space. Feel the resistance of the space as you move through it. Reach with the fingers open. Reach down with the elbows, the wrists, the fingers. wrists, the elbows, fingers, feel the balls of your feet. Feel the connection throughout reach of the fingers open. And I want you to sink into your heels now, reach down with your elbows, down with your wrists and feel the yin there as you're letting all that go. yourself sinking into the earth and feel into that yin. The energy of the earth becomes dominant, it's establishing your base, your foundation. The yang has taken a back seat for the moment. Now feel the balls of your feet, your set the knees and reach with the wrists. 
the fingers, or reach with the elbows, and reach with the fingers. Feel that expansion. And rotate. Palms up. And feel the difference that that makes. I want you to feel yourself reaching up to the heavens. And this is where that eye of spirit thing comes in because unlike the yin, unlike the earth energy where you're, you're kind of feeling into something solid, the yang is the opposite. It's not solid. It's the opposite, it's insubstantial. And so as you're meeting the heavens, you are using different senses to encounter what's there. You're reaching, you're reaching up and going into resonance with that expansiveness that is the heavens, that is the sky, the, the universe is expanding constantly. And, and to feel into that and feel into resonating with the unknowable and the unknown. And then rotate your palms. And sink into your heels and ah, feel dissolving into the yin, allowing the yin chi to rise through your body and fill your whole body with that yin expression. Rotate the palms and gather. So feel yourself, feel that the heaviness of the space pushing down on your arms, on your hands as you're coming up and lifting the lifting that empty space and feeling the density of the empty space. Reaching out, pointing, reaching out, getting those fingernails as you expand, open, opening, gathering. Reaching upward, feeling the vastness of the insubstantiality knowing that you can never encapsulate it in your mind, but you can resonate with it. Allow that energy to circulate through you and go through your feet and into the earth, like you're a lightning rod, taking the, taking the vast energy of the young, running it through you and taking it down through your feet and into the earth. And rotate your palms, sink into your heels, and feel the resistance of the space as you come down.
Sink into the balls of your feet. Feel your fingernails. Grab with them. Rotate your palms. Carry the energy. Carry the space. We're doing a little dance with the empty space, with the insubstantiality of the empty space right now. Reaching, opening, expanding. Bring your arms up even higher. Meeting the Yang Chi of the heavens. Taking it beyond anything that you can consider with your mind. And sink into your heels and ah, bring the hands down. Pressing down. Feeling space, feeling your everything moving toward your center now. The energy moving down through your body, down into the earth. Feel your feet contacting the floor and extend your awareness through the feet and into the earth. With each breath, find yourself releasing down a little more, relaxing and letting go. Taking all that young expansion and letting it go. Feel your arms, shoulders, neck unwinding as they are being pulled by the earth chi, pulled down by the earth's gravitational pull. Feel energy just dripping off your fingertips and into the earth. Each breath allowing you to sink a little deeper. Still reaching with the knee one. Just as we had the kite string from below as we went up. Now we have a kite string holding us to the heavens as we sink deeper and deeper into the yin. Relaxing and letting go. Doing the minimum to hold your posture. Each breath being an exploration.
your fingers feel like they have weights attached to them pulling down. Step in. Take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. The yin and the yang. All those distinctions, throw them away. Just now, just there is just now. No distinctions, just now. Please have a seat. Rick, my, my, from my knees down through, I was made of earth. Mm. My arms from the elbows up were made of sky. Mm. <laughs> and it, it was fascinating to see how they met within my body. It, it just kept shifting through from my head down to my knees as to how much was earth, how much was sky. Again, just, just really, really wonderful. I just wanted to make, for, for years now, I didn't want to, I never wanted to judge it, understand it, define it. I just wanted to embrace it and enjoy it and let it do what it did without me wrestling it to a level where anyone could understand. Don't need to understand, just need to savor, appreciate, share, care, enjoy. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Those, those, those. Thank, oh. thank you. <laughs> cool. Nick. Um, I just have to ask this. Anybody, uh, anybody have cold hands or sore hands? Or, I mean, I felt like my, um, my hands were expanding and uh, rising. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at feeling my pulse in my body, but I swear I thought my fingers were gonna swell up and explode. It was, it was really, really pulsing, moving hard. It's cool, very cool. Thank you. I didn't get that in my hands, but whenever, whenever, I hear his voice. It's like Pavlov's dog. My lips just start vibrating. It's just <laughs> I could feel I could feel the pulsing going right through my lips. <laughs> Don't know why. Just that's the way it is. Well, I thought it was pretty funny when he said, "Feel it dripping off of my fingers." I was like, "Yeah, dripping like more like fire hoses." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mine were electrical outlets. I mean, but you did that the first time I met you uh, many, many decades ago. You you turned me into one of the Spider-Man characters, Electro, and it still <laughs> just keeps going that way. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, um, uh, uh, the first round with our arms up, I was 
you know, getting some tension and, and stuff like that. So I just kind of let it flow and figured out where the, you know, felt where the hose was kinked and reached out more or whatever. And then after that, <clears throat> the rest of it was just, you know, an amazing flow. It felt like, um, it felt like standing under a waterfall. Mm. Uh, that, that, <laughs> you know, just that, that amazing, you know, thousands of gallons going, you know, coming over you. And uh, and then you know now I just feel like how you feel after you stand on a waterfall, just like clean and everything's gone. Mm. So, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> she was <Yeah>. making noises. <laughs> yes, I was making noises. Um, <clears throat> before I forget to say it, I know that you have said this in many ways, and maybe you have actually used these words but I did not hear it um, as clearly as I did today when you said, do the minimum to maintain your posture. That was just like a bell, a gong. I mean, I've, I've heard that said by you, you know, many different ways, but I don't think quite those words. And that just really resonated. And that was that helped me move into a different space. Um, mm -hmm. The perfect—I won't even say it was a perfect blend because the yin was even more dramatic. You know, at the end, it was um, yes, I was reaching with the knee one, you know, and I was still very connected, but. Uh, um, <laughs> I know there's a character, is it Jabba the Hutt in Star Wars, where, you know, it's like this big pile, this like almost pyramid <laughs> shape, um, but still still definitely feeling the, the young, um, but just even more yin. Um, I don't know if it was more yin than, than last week, I, you know, because that was last week, that was a whole nother, another thing. Uh, yeah. but it was, um, wow, <laughs> just wow. But that, yeah, the do as little, what did I say? Do as little as possible to maintain your posture. Those words that, uh, that I'm going to, I'm plagiarizing now. <laughs> I'm going to have to use that because it just, I, I'll have to look at, I'll have to look at the video to find out what those words are because they just came. I, you know, I, you know, there, everything, everything I was saying there was kind of, you know, spontaneously being created. So uh, I don't remember the exact phrasing myself at that point, but uh, was, I think something like do the minimum to uh, maintain your, your posture. Yeah. 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 Like. It was uh, really that just, like I said, I don't know if it affected anybody else the way it did me, but uh, I'm using that, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it can be just relax, let go. I mean, it's like last week, how let go of the attachment, you know, when, you know, letting it all go that, that I came up with that word, you know, the attachment um, was a big deal. And then this one, you know, just the minimum to maintain your posture it was perfect because it really, the whole time, I mean, Scott said he got to, you know, he was, he let go, but the whole time I was letting go, letting go because, you know, they're, okay, there's a little tension here, a little tension, and it's all between the shoulder blades mainly for me. Um, and just, you know, okay, oh, there, there's a little bit more, it can let go, oh, 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 you just went back. You went back, so let go of that again. So it wasn't a struggle. It was just uh, being aware, you know, being aware of what was there and what you could let go of more of to be able to let that, you know, it's like, hallelujah, you know, <laughs> letting that energy come in and reaching out for it. Um, you know, it was just a very good session, by the by, very good. <laughs> carry on 
<laughs> Another thing I really love about this class is that we find out how similar we all are, and we also find out how different each of us is. Mm. It's true. Yeah, you know what's really funny is I don't, I have no memory of you saying those words. <laughs> I just for right? me. Yeah. Just for me. <laughs> I really don't. I have no memory of that. Hmm. It it rings a distant bell. Oh, well, we don't need to, right? Yeah. I said a lot of words. So. <laughs> <laughs> I said a lot of words, and they're usually quite good. They're always quite good. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Well, the uh, you know point I made. Uh, hopefully, those words uh, I rang rang uh, rang true for you guys. But the idea that when we're accessing this young energy, this is the, the young of the heavens, you know, we're moving into this unknowable and unknown state, this that where we are more and more dependent on the eye of spirit to navigate. So if we want to find a way around, we have to shift out of the tethers of our rationality and our physicality to be able to go deep into that that insubstantial quality of the of, of the young, and that's why we like to keep the uh, keep the kite string there, so that we don't float off into the into the ether. Uh, but at the same time, our ability, our capacity to extend more, 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 and be able to tolerate that level of insubstantiality then en enables us to be able to access more of the eye of spirit. And it is also allows us to go deeper into the yin, allows us to go deeper into the solidity, the substantiality of life, to be able to confidently enter into whatever game you happen to be playing and really, uh, get immersed in it, knowing that you can shift gears and float away anytime you like. So it is, this is a, um, I think a key survival tool for humans going forward. I think, you know, we're, we're moving out of an age, you know, where, where things were very um, rational and, and physical, materialistic. And we're moving in more and more into a place where there's a balance between that and this something that is that we've never encountered before. And our ability to navigate that world that, that is emerging is um, I think going to be dependent on our capacity to explore with the eye of spirit, explore the, the, the realm of the of the insubstantial. I hope some of this is making sense. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, okay, so it, uh, yeah, so that, a lot of what, what we're doing here is creating those tools, which, you know, you know, I, I, I'm speaking in, in general terms there, like, you know, grandiose terms even of, of humans, you know, doing this, but I'm talking about us, I'm talking about, you know, uh, anybody who wants to get involved with this, you know, have we have that? Uh, it's an opportunity to to take take it deeper, to explore the uh, uh, terra incognita of uh, of what's happening right in this moment. So uh, that's that's the fun stuff, Scott. Um, so. Yeah, um, as we were doing it, I had to, you know, uh, remind, you know, tell my tell my brain, you know, okay, we, we don't we don't need to make the story now. We'll we'll make the story later a couple times. Not Good. not a lot, but I did have to do it while, and now I'm having trouble making sentences. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. It's you know, the more we 
the more we are, the more comfortable we get with the eye of spirit, you know, it, it, we translating that into the common language becomes a little more challenging. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's why, you know, like you hear things like, you know, ma'am, it's like, it's like, it's wow, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, do. I know what you mean. Because <laughs> that's the, yeah, that, that's the language, you know, that um, uh, <laughs> of a generation or two ago. And, uh, you know, now we, we don't have the luxury of just saying, whoa, far out. You know, we, we <laughs> that worked that worked for me, you know, 60 years ago. But uh, now I want to <laughs> I want something a little different. You know, I want something that uh, that uh, where I can say, yeah, this is how we talk about this. This is how we share this information so that we're not stuck going through the same rituals over and over again, hoping to get a glimpse of something that we just encountered you know, <laughs> within the hour, you know, it's like, oh, we're, <laughs> we, we boarded the bus and, and it took us sightseeing and now we're back home, but somehow changed for having had the bus ride. And uh, <laughs> so, but the, the language that, you know, we can, we can use to express these things and clarifying the language, I think, is a key part of this whole this whole operation to be able to share and and be able to meet like this and and uh, and have a group experience like this. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you.